Bond versus bail. When dealing with legal matters in Michigan, it's crucial to understand the distinctions between bail and bond. These terms commonly arise when individuals seek temporary release from jail while awaiting trial. Despite being used interchangeably, bail and bond have separate meanings and implications within Michigan's legal system. By comprehending the nuances of bail and bond in the context of Michigan statutes, individuals can navigate the complexities of the criminal justice system more effectively. Understanding Bail and Bond Bail and bond are essential legal concepts that play a significant role in the criminal justice system. They are related, but they are not the same thing. To understand better, let's dive into the specifics of each term and explore the various types of bail bonds. Types of Bail Bonds There are several types of bail bonds, and their availability and use depend on jurisdictional regulations and individual circumstances. Here are some common types of bail bonds. Surety bond A surety bond involves the presence of a third party, usually a bail bondsman or a bonds agency, who guarantees the defendant's appearance in court. Cash bond A cash bond requires the defendant or their representative to pay the full bail amount in cash to secure the defendant's release. Property bond In a property bond, the defendant or their representative secures the defendant's release from custody using real property, real estate, as collateral. Personal Recognizance Bond A personal recognizance bond, also known as a signature bond or an unsecured bond, requires no money or collateral. Constitutional Right to Bail In the state of Michigan, the right to bail is protected under the Michigan Constitution. Factors Influencing Bail Amount When determining the bail amount for a defendant, the court weighs various factors to ensure that the amount is neither excessive nor insufficient. These factors include the severity of the crime, the defendant's previous criminal record, the defendant's flight risk assessment, and community connections. One, severity of crime. 2. Previous criminal record. 3. Flight risk assessment. 4. Community connections. Options for release. There are various options for a defendant's release in the state of Michigan. 1. Release on own recognizance, or 2. Release on bail bond. 3. Release on cash deposit. Bail denial. Even though the right to bail is constitutionally protected in Michigan, there are some circumstances in which a judge may deny bail entirely. As mentioned earlier, Defendants charged with crimes such as murder and other specified crimes when the proof is evident or the presumption is great may be denied bail. This aims to protect public safety by keeping potentially dangerous individuals in custody until their trial. Rights and Responsibilities of the Defendant 
The rights and responsibilities of the defendant in Michigan include complying with the conditions of bail, which may involve adhering to curfew and travel restrictions, meeting employment requirements, attending substance abuse treatment if necessary, and abiding by any imposed no-contact orders. Conditions of Bail Upon being arrested and charged with a crime, the defendant may be released from custody pending trial or other court proceedings. Curfew and Travel Restrictions A curfew may be imposed as a condition of bail to limit the defendant's movements during certain hours of the day and night. Employment Requirements As a condition of bail, the defendant may be required to maintain gainful employment. Substance Abuse Treatment If the defendant has a history of substance abuse or if the crime in question involved drugs or alcohol, the court may require substance abuse treatment as a condition of bail. No contact orders. If the defendant is charged with a crime involving violence, threats, or harassment against specific individuals, such as domestic violence, the court may impose a no contact order as a condition of bail. Breach of bail conditions. When a defendant is released on bail, they are entrusted to follow the established conditions until their trial or other court proceedings are resolved. Any violation of these conditions can result in severe consequences, including arrest and possible incarceration. Bond forfeiture If a defendant is released on a bond and violates their bail conditions or fails to appear in court, the court may order the forfeiture of the bond. Returning to court A defendant released on bail is required to attend all court appointments related to their case. Required court appearances While released on bail, the defendant must attend all court appearances, which may include arraignments, pretrial hearings, trial proceedings, and sentencing. Consequences of missing a court date Missing a court date while on bail can have serious ramifications. Bail refunds and exoneration When a person is arrested and charged with a crime, they may have to post bail in order to be released from jail until their trial. Bail is a financial guarantee that the defendant will appear in court for all scheduled hearings. If the defendant appears for all court dates, the bail money is returned to the person who paid it, regardless of whether the defendant is found guilty or not guilty. Bail refunds Bail refunds can vary depending on the type of bail posted and the jurisdiction in which the case was heard. There are generally two types of bail, full cash bail and bail bond premiums. Full cash bail When a defendant posts the full amount of bail in cash or through a cashier's check, the money is usually held by the court until the resolution of the case. Bail bond premiums If the defendant used a bail bond agent or company to post bail, they would typically pay a non-refundable premium, usually 10% of the total bail amount. Bail bond exoneration When a judge formally releases a bail bond, the process is referred to as exoneration. Releasing collateral 
Once the bail bond is exonerated, the bail bond agent or company will release any collateral used to secure the bond. Ending obligations to the bail bond agent With the exoneration of the bail bond, the defendant or the person who posted bail is no longer financially responsible to the bail bond agent. Contact us today at 248-451-2200 to schedule a free consultation and discuss your case.